thank you for the introduction and thank you for the invitation to speak here in what looks like it will be a really, really great conference. Um, so I have no special stories about Godman because I never met him, but I just wanted to say that I heard his name before hearing about automorphic form because when I was 18, so I was a really young student, and one of, of my math teacher was just telling me that the best lecture she ever had in algebra was Godman's lecture. And she just said that I should go and read this cours d'algebra. And so I opened it and, well, I was 18 and I didn't understand a lot of what was going on in there. So that was kind of my first real contact with algebra. But it didn't prevent me to go further. Um, so that's all for the Godman part. So today I will report on a joint work with Auguste Hébert, which is just there, um, about iwori hecker algebras and Mazur for split cast Moody groups. Um, so it has very little to do with automorphic forms, I'm sorry. Uh, but the motivation comes from reducti reductive groups. So maybe I should so start with an introduction. So everything started when uh, August advisor, Stéphane Gosson, uh, asked me one day whether I've ever read about Schneider and Stuhler's papers and if I think that it may apply to Casmudi groups. So I could answer the first question that I read Schneider's and Stuhler's paper, but uh, that I had no idea about what was a Casmudi group, so I wouldn't be very helpful. So maybe I should recall what is in this paper. So I will not recall everything, just what was interested Gosson at that time. So here the, let me say the motivation comes from uh, Schneider and Stuhler in the 97 papers in the Publication Mathematique de l'IHES. So in this paper, uh, starting from a smooth representation, let me say irreducible, even if we don't need this, a smooth representation of G, which is the F point of a connected reductive group. So here G will be connected reductive defined over F, and F is a non-Archimedean local field. Uh, of finite residue field. Okay, so positive characteristic P. So starting from such representation, so it's complex representation, which is not usual in my work, but here I am. Uh, so starting from such a representation, they attach to this a uh, coefficient system, so a G equivalent coefficient system on the Bratitz building. And to this, from this G equivalent coefficient system, they get a functorial way to get projective resolution of pi. Okay. And so basically what uh, Gosson was interested in is trying to see whether if now we don't take a connected reductive group but a Casmudi group, so maybe a split Casmudi group, um, can we to such representation attach such resolution? And here, just the two first questions I had on the top of my head, without knowing anything about Casmudi groups, were, okay, do we know what is a smooth representation? And do we have some sh something that would behave like Bratitz building for Casmudi groups? Because if you know a little bit about Casmudi groups, you know that uh, under some, in some, um, in some settings, you can attach to them a pair of twin buildings, but not one building. And well, it's not very convenient in this setting. But here, um, why Gosson asked this is that um, with Rousseau, they built 
something that could replace this Bratis building, which is called a masure. So I will come uh, on this a bit later, just because it's a bit fun. Uh, why did they call this masure? Because as you will see, it's well, it's like a building, but it's really, really crappy and it's very not convenient. You really don't want to live in there. So that's why you go like this. Um, okay, so the two brown underlined uh, words are really what we will start from to explain how, how we arrived to Iwori Hek algebra. So, of course, uh, they didn't know what smooth representation were, and it was even worse. So, I will just phrase it like this. So, maybe, okay, let me just say it. To say that pi is smooth um, means that any vector has open stabilizer in G. By a representation of G. So here you have some topology of G that is appearing, meaning that you have to know what is an open, an open subgroup of G. And if you go a little bit further and are kind of more optimistic, um, you can uh, more generally do we have, um, let me say, a nice topology on G, so in the Casmoody setting. That gives back So when I say the usual, it's really the, the topology of G of F coming from F, like when you used to work with, when you work with reductive group, um, with piadic groups, should I say. So the usual topology. When G comes from so in the, redu in the reductive case. So I will be more specific on this later, but I may maybe I can already do a little spoiler here. The answer is no, so far we don't have such a topology. So about smoothness, it's um, okay, a bit tricky. So we were kind of, okay, let's not talk about smoothness for now and maybe focus on the, the other parts. And the, uh, having the other part, so when you have this uh, generalization of what is building, which is this mother, this mother, you can also define uh, um, Hecker algebras. So not uh, as many Hecker algebras as we have in the reductive case, but at least two main Hecker algebras. So first, the spherical Hecker algebra. So basically, just think at, of this as the convolution algebra of a uh, bin variant function under the uh, integral, integral point of G. And the classical Iwori Hecker algebra. So I will explain a bit more about this later, but just <coughs> to kind of point out what we did with uh, Auguste. Um, so uh, Gossan, Rousseau, and the, uh, Bardipens, and other people I will mention later, they managed to define such algebras and to check that when you work with reductive groups, you really got back the algebra you, you're used to. Uh, but the thing is that, um, so in the, in, the, in the spherical case here, um, Gossin and Rousseau managed to prove that we have uh, an isomorphism between the spherical Hecker algebra and the same analog of uh, what you got in the reductive case using Satake isomorphism. And here, well, if you believe in the fact that you want to generalize what happened in the reductive case, then you should have the center of this algebra being isomorphic to this spherical Hecker algebra. And one thing we checked is that, well, if you take this construction, it doesn't work, it's not true. 
So starting from this, we'll build another Iwori Heike algebra, and this will be the third part of my talk, um, that really, again, um, kind of generalize what happened in the reductive group case, and which moreover satisfies this analog of Bernstein theorem. Okay, so that's kind of the motivation, introduction. So maybe um, kind of a, sum a summary of what we did so far. And then I'll go into more precise notation, definition, and statements. Uh, so first thing is that um, we prove that we cannot, uh, let me say, mimic what exists in the reductive case to get um, a topological group when when curly G is Kasmudi non reductive um, we showed that the center of this Iwori Heck algebra is too small. And sometimes it's really, really small, like it's just scalars. And last thing, we built a completed Iwahori Hecke algebra, uh, which satisfies um, an analog of Bernstein theorem, meaning that the center is really isomorphic to the spherical Hecke algebra. So this is what I, I want to discuss. Uh, if I have enough time, I will discuss another construction we did that gives more he brings more Heck algebras in the game, more in what already exists in the reductive case, uh, but only if I have time. Okay. So this is all in a in our joint paper. Uh, so if you want to check this, okay. So now. So maybe if you want, the introduction is the first part, and this is the second part. Um, so maybe I want to recall very, very briefly what are uh, Kasmudi data and how you attach to this following Tietz construction Kasmudi groups. So here. Um, I've used um, this paper of Bertrand Remy in Asterix. So it's Asterix number 8082 uh, in French. But everything is really, really, really well explained. Um, so if you have any kind of uh, requirement on that part, I really recommend that you read that, that paper. OK, so first definition. So here, I will, I'm sorry, I will go with a bunch of notation and definitions. So it will not be the funniest part of the talk, but it's really, really necessary. Um, so what we call a Kasmudi da data, datum. So it's really like in the, in the reductive case that you will have a tuple of data and you will attach to them some kind of combinatorial and geometric objects. And so it's just a tuple of five elements and where the notation are really the usual ones. So you have 
two mothers, roots, co roots. So indexed by a finite group, by a finite set. So A here will be just a generalized car Carter matrix. X and Y are free Z module of finite rank. Um, that are dual to uh, from each other, so the duality map is part of the data. Um, and uh, alpha i are elements of x, these are the roots, and the alpha chech are in y, it's the co root. And OK, let me really loosely say they are compatible with A, meaning that the coefficient of A are given by the duality between alpha A and alpha chech G for A G. Okay. OK, so if you have such a data, as in the reductive case, you can define an apartment, you can define vial groups, you can define other things. So in particular, to such a tuple, so you can define the model apartment. So, as usual, it's just the scalar extension of y to r. So I will denote it by curly a. So there will be many a's. Um, so all the alpha i now can be seen as linear form on A. Just by duality. So using this remark, I can define automorphism of A. So it's a reflection formula as usual. So you take an element V of Y and you map it on uh, V minus alpha I. I'm always mistaking the V alpha I chech. So here you're still in, in A. Um, and you then can define the vectorial veil group. So it's a veil group, but we like to refer it as a vectorial one because of this construction. Uh, It's just a group generated by all these RIs in GLA. Okay. And, um, okay, we get. Shall I make the remark now? Yes, okay. Um, note, and it's really important uh, saying that WV is finite is the same. So when, okay, maybe uh, when coming, no, I will say this later, when we have defined G and then I will make this remark. Um, so we also have an affine value group. And an order. So, oops. So I mentioned here the existence of this fine vial group, so we will not explicitly see it appear in what we, we will see today, but it's really related to this iwori hecker algebra. It allows you to get a presentation of this iwori hecker algebra, for instance. Um, it's just the usual way to define it. You just uh, some direct pro oh, I always got it the wrong way. 
and QCH QCH is just the co-root lattice. Okay. Um, okay. And the thing is that when you got such data, you can follow what Tits did, and you get a functor. So there is. G. So it defines above on the category of rings, has value in the groups. Okay. Um, I will be really slowly here. Um, so add H to S, satisfying. Uh, so there are nine ax axioms, the Casimir groups axioms. And uh, determine by its value on the field. And when I say that we consider split Casimir groups, it means that the group we are considering are f values of g for f being a field. Okay, so split Casimir group. So everything I wrote up there is just about split Casimir groups. Uh, you can work in more general setting. What we did really work for split Casimir groups, and uh, I don't want to go further now. Uh, if you have more questions on this, I think uh, it should wait a, a bit later. Um, so is then G of F with F field and G like this. Okay. Um, and here, well, the first motivation was when F was a non uh, non non local field of finite residue field, as usual. So maybe I can give an example so that you see that it's not that bad. So for instance, we have the so-called affine SLN. Uh, if you consider just the functor that takes a ring and map it to SL n plus 1 of R of t, t minus 1, Okay, um, then this just maybe okay. Well, not I don't need the code, and it's an an, an instance of a fine Casimir group. If you really want to go into details, but anyway, just to say that well, it's not kind of if you look at this, it's not so different from the group. I was used to work with, like periodic groups or everything, but a little bit. Okay. Um, maybe some remarks here. So first thing I was, I started to write earlier. So um, if you start, so you have this Casmudi group. So if you take a split Casmudi group, so here you put a, a field here, for instance, and you look at the corresponding, uh, for instance, veil group here. Um, Saying that WV, so the vectorial value group is finite, is the same as saying that G is reductive. So that's why in the second, the results we got with Eber, most of the time you will see when WV is infinite, infinite, because when it's finite, well, it's reductive case, and people already worked on this. Okay. Um, another remark, which really shows the difference with the usual reductive case, is that in, ge uh, in general, so you have all these linear forms here, alpha i, and you can look at the intersection of the kernels. And it's what is called the inessential, inessential part of the problem. And this is non-zero. And this really brings trouble when you want to look at this uh, building construction, as you will see in a moment. 
Okay. Um, are there any questions? Okay. So, more definitions. <laughs> so, the second part is about, uh, we, I called it filters and, me and measure. Okay. So, uh, I will say it now. So, if you really want a precise, um, so the, the, the English term for measure is hovel, but the mathematical uh, that notion corresponding is a fine ordered hovel, ordered fine hovel. So there are extra conditions. Like you can define more generally what is a hovel, and then if you add this condition, you have this measure here. And this measure really should be seen as the, correspond the corresponding object for Casmudi groups as bracket building or for connected relative groups. Okay, so here the, the point is not to do a lecture on filters and measure everything, just to show you that it's really, really more crappy than in the reductive case. So, uh, for instance, I will start with kind of nice definitions. So we have, uh, for instance, we have, as in the reductive case, we have vectorial chambers. So here, they will just be of the form so you can have a sign, but even if you don't care about the sign, it will be complicated. You just start from the uh, fundamental chamber. You take an element of the vectorial value group, and you make the second one act on the first one. So this is just the fundamental chamber, like all the elements on which all the alpha i's are positive. So, so far, it's not very complicated. Um, we also have vectorial faces. So, um, so, basically the same kind of construction. You take an element of the fail group, and you will take some part of E and look at elements that vanishes uh, when indexed by G and are positive when not indexed by G. So here we have W, WV, and for G included in E, you just set this. I think it's vanishing on G. And positive otherwise. Okay. So if we could just use this, well, we would just have buildings and everything will be fine. But the thing is that we can't just use those. Um, maybe I will recall that the cheats cone. So it's this quality. So it really plays an important role in what we do here. Uh, it's just the union of basically all the image of this fundamental, the closure of the fundamental chamber um, by the action of the veil group. And the thing is that um, this stitch cone here can contain, well, infinitely many copies of this closure, which is not the case in general. Okay, because here WV can be infinite. Um, and it's one of the reasons, not the only one, but one of the reasons why when you really want to have the corresponding object, you can't just work with this vectorial object, but you have to go to filters. So more precisely, what will be uh, like a face, a fa facet um, of, let me see the measure to be because I haven't defined it yet. So it will be uh, indexed by some element of the apartment and some vectorial face, like this. And it will be the germ at x of such a sector. Okay, So this is a, a sector. So it's, again, filters. So It's a filter. It's a set of 
it's a set of sets that satisfy some inclusion condition. I mean, I'm not aiming to make the the thing. Maybe here I can. Okay, maybe I can just say that uh, germ. If you take any uh, any x in A and any omega containing it, this will just be the set of all the subsets in A that contains a neighborhood of x in W. In omega, I said W in omega. Okay. Um, so this is definitely not as nice as all the things here. It's really a filter. It can be <coughs> really, really, really big. Um, and well, there's no nice topology on that kind of things. And so you really have to try to figure things out. Um, maybe what I can say is that, for instance, uh, in the Bretitz theory, you're used to the fact that, well, locally you have finitely many chambers and everything's going well. Here, even, even for really, really nice group as uh, SL2, so a fine SL2, you can have infinitely many chambers, uh, even locally. So it's, it's really a mess. But anyway, even if it's a mess, um, what Gossan Rousseau and so I will put three names here, I would say Gossan Rousseau, Rousseau, and Hébert. So Gossan Rousseau, they define the, mas the mesure. They say, okay, we can build something that will generalize what is building. Rousseau made the whole axiomatic saying, okay, it's really behaving the same way, like you have five axioms and it's really the counterpart. And Hébert proved that, well, among these five axioms, there are three of them you can exchange for one axiom, which is really nicer to work with. So we have an axiomatic setting that um, attach, that attach to A and WV, a set curly E called the mesure attached to A and okay. And I, I phrase it like this because really this construction only depends on the fact that you take an apartment and a vial group, something that would behave like a vial group. So in particular, you can start from G, in particular. One can consider mesure attached to a Casnogi group. I mean, he attached to its root datum. The bold face A is the same as the curly A? Or uh, no, uh, wait, 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 I change the notation. Yes, this is this A here. Sorry. Thank you. Um, can I do this? The curly A is a bold A. It's more used to this, sorry. Uh, it's because here usually the curly A is covering by apartment of the building. And it's, it's really the same here. You have this set uh, and Part of the data is also a covering by apartment, which are sets that have a structure isomorphic to this A here. So it's really the, the same thing as in the reductive case. Okay. Um, and okay, I said it several times, but I never said it. When J is reductive, we recover. And really one, not a pair or anything. Okay. And this mesure here is really at the heart of the construction uh, of this two algebra here. So it's a lot of work done by all these people. So I will not resume everything in two minutes. But maybe I can, before going further, I can define some groups that are of specific interest when one are interested in smooth representations. 
Um, so starting from a face f, okay, having a vectorial direction fv, one can consider its pointwise stabilizer. which will basically only depend on fv, but I will just denote it uh, f like this. Okay, So stabilizer under the action of g on i. So maybe let me uh, make it, if not yet, really clear. So from now on, I really fix uh, split cast Moody group, so I just look at g of f for f, even a local non-Archimedean field. Uh, I consider the masure attached to this group, and so the group acts on this, on its masure. And under this action, I can look at the facet, at the fa face, and look at its pointwise stabilizer, its kf. And this kf here, well, if you think at what's happening in the bracket building theory, it's kind of parahoric subgroups, and well, for the nicest one of them, they are open compact and they are really used to define this uh, spherical Hecke algebra and Iwori Hecke algebra. So the question here, uh, maybe example, just so that you see that it's really the, the nice objects we, we expect to. So if you, for instance, look at the subgroup coming from the, just the, 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 the origin of the of the masure, you just have the integral points. Okay, so this, well, you want it to be a maximal von compact if you can make this happen. Okay. Um, another case, if when you look at the fundamental chamber, well, you have what uh, Bardi, Porce, Gousson, and Rousseau call an Iwahori subgroup because it's really. Okay, I would love to write it E, but I already have an E, so I, I will just not do it. But it's really the Iwori subgroup you get when you're in the reductive setting. Really just the pointwise stabilizer of this uh, chamber here, this fundamental chamber. And if you start from this K-naught here, you will get the spherical Hecke algebra. Oh, so I will be a bit... Um, so it will be correct, but a bit vague. Like you just look at the invariant function under k k naught here. This is k. Um, well, not really on j, but in on something a bit smaller. And if you look at this, then you can see that you have a convolutional algebra, and this really gives you back the spherical Hick algebra in the reductive case. So that's what Gosain Rousseau did. Uh, to be really, really complete, I should say that. Uh, there are also work of Braverman, Kashdan, and Patnaik, but it's under a little bit more restrictive assumptions. Like they assume the group to be split and twisted and fine, I think. Um, so in this setting, so Braverman, Kashdan, and Patnaik, they also have this spherical Hick algebra. Uh, but Gosson and Rousseau went a bit further because they do this in full generative for Nikas Moody groups, and they got this Satake isomorphism also. And if you start from this Iwahori subgroup, then, so again, under the same assumption, Braverman, Kajan, and Pataik. And on the other hand, so in full generality, Bardi, Pense, Gossan, and Rousseau, they define this Iwahori Hecke algebra that we will really be interested in from now on. Um, and again, you can see this as a convolutional algebra of um, I invariant, I B invariant function. Uh, but you have to be a bit careful because to define this convolution product, you have to go in a bigger algebra. Okay, you have to go in a bunch stylistic algebra. What you don't need to do in the reductive case, but in the Kasmodi groups, we have to go into a bigger algebra so that this convolution product a priori is well defined, 
And then you show that you really stay in this set, what turns it into real an algebra. OK. Um, so here, kind of the naive hope was, well, maybe we can put a topology on J such that this would be, well, at least this one would be open compact, maybe maximal, and maybe this one would be at least open. And the first result we have with Ever is that this cannot happen. So this is a consequence of uh, something a little bit more general that I will state now. So, um, so we assume that the vectorial by group is infinite. Otherwise, we're in the reductive setting, and well, we already know what's happening in this case. Um, we take f uh, type zero facet. So what does it mean to be type 0? Just mean that all the vertex are in the WV orbit of O. OK, just not very complicated. Then there is no topology on J such that KF is open compact. So in particular, there is no topology on J such that this K0, which is Ks, or this KCVF, may be open compact. So it was, well, it was a bit um, not disappointed because we didn't know what to expect, but it was kind of a bit frustrating because we were already like, OK, if we have this, then we can make compact induction and everything. So now we have to be a bit more careful. Um, but then we say, OK. If this smoothness thing doesn't work now, maybe we can see whether this Hecker algebra has a kind of reasonable Hecker algebra. And here we had another surprise. So maybe I, I should start another part here. We say, okay, well, we have this Iwori Hecker algebra. Let's try to compute its center. So, um, so the, the goal was to see whether its center. Uh, uh, is isomorphic to the spherical Hecker algebra that I will not denote like this. So maybe from now on, I will just put these two notations here. I will try to stick to them until the end. Okay. And um, so by Gossin and Rousseau, we know that. Uh, there is a Sataki isomorphism here that says that this spherical Hecke algebra is um, the fixed point in a so-called Lujenga algebra. So I will define this. Okay, I will tell you precisely what are these objects here. Um, but what you have to notice here is that this element can have um, infinite support. I mean, they can have uh, infinitely many non-zero coefficient, okay, if you think about them as a formal series. Uh, it can have infinitely many non-zero coefficient. And the thing is that, unfortunately, in this iwori Hick algebra, that cannot happen. So more precisely, what we proved here, I will put this as a proposition. So the center. H is isomorphic to so it's so these two uh, things are sub as as part of Y, okay? But um, 
it's very explicit, I mean, you can compute this, but what you have to remember from this is that here you have finite support. I mean, you only ha can have a, a finitely many non-zero coefficient. Well, here you don't, uh, and in particular, it is not isomorphic to H spherical. And I mean, it's even worse than that in the sense that, well, there are some instances of G such that here you just have scholars, you just have C. Okay. Um, okay, maybe uh, what I will do in this part here, I will write everything over C because the main motivation was complex representation, but it works in a more general th setting. Like if you take a ring here that contains some Z uh, brackets, sigma, sigma prime, with sigma and sigma prime being parameters for Hecke algebras, then it's really working well too. So you don't have to stick to complex theory. Okay. So here the, the, the question was, okay, th th this, uh, this result just say that in some sense this Iwori Hecke algebra is too small. Um, but if you think a bit about it, it's not that surprising because as I said earlier, in this mazure, well, you have infinitely many chambers and this value group being infinite, you can well say that maybe finiteness is too strong and maybe you want al almost finiteness. And this is uh, what I will yeah, still have the time. What I will discuss now. So I, I said that I will tell you what is this. So I will do it this now. Okay, so um, the first definition. So if you start from a subset of Y, you will say it's almost finite. If the following condition holds, so if there is so I don't know, finite subset, uh, let me call it J, Y, such that. And I'll have to write the condition correctly. Can I ask you a very stupid question? What, what is C of Y in double square brackets? That's what I will define. That the point of this part is to define this object here. It is Loi Jenga algebra. So, it's in a paper of Lundjeng. Yes. Oh. Here, you mean? Yeah. Yes. So that one, I, I will define it here. That, uh, that the point of all this section is to tell you what is this is, and then to explain why we made a bigger algebra to see this happen. In this. Okay. Um, so this is this condition here, which is that if you take an element of the subset, then uh, you can always dominate it by an element of a finite set. So here, this domination thing, um, it's a, rela uh, a pre order on the building, and it just means that nu minus lambda is with positive coefficient. You can always write this as a linear combination of co roots, and what you want is that all the coefficients are positive. Okay. And having this, so there is a lemma. It's a technical lemma, but it helps to make sense of the next definition. Uh, if you take E an almost finite subset of Y, then for any E prime So here, no condition on E prime. There is a finite part G of Y such that the intersection of E and E prime is included in finitely many translate of this Kutchich plus here. This is.
So this, um, this tells us in some sense that, OK, it's not finite, but if you look in finitely many slices, that may be infinite, then you can manage to make things work. And now, what is this uh, C double bracket here? So So a priori is just the set, so uh, it's formal series. So indexed by y, as you can guess. So what do you assume here? So you want that this family here, so it's a part of y, and you want it to be almost finite. So when I say this, it's, it's support, like the set of lambda such that a lambda is non-zero is almost finite, OK? And this e lambda is just a family of symbols that are multiplicative symbols. It's like what you want for a basis. So you want that a lambda times a nu is a lambda plus nu. For any lambda, a nu in y. Okay. And the Lujanga theorem says so. That's what it's called. So you can really define a struct of algebra on this. Okay. So it's an inventionist. Sixty-one. If you want the full reference. Um, this is an algebra, a complex algebra here, but again, you don't really need to be over C, you can be uh, over any kind of big enough ring. Okay. And um, similarly, one can define, so following the same model, Lujega algebra for y plus and for y plus plus, and I should tell you who these people are. So here y plus is just the trace of y on the tits cone, and y plus plus, it's even smaller, it's a trace of the closure of the fundamental chamber. So again, just want to here, that would be finite if you were in the reductive case here. You have an essential, an essential part, so you have to be careful. But anyway, you can define the same thing. And again, you can have two algebras like this that will be subalgebras of this big one. And what we proved so maybe I will just uh, give you uh, the statement that uh, interests me that. Uh, So we prove that, um, so here, now you just look at the action of Wv on y, and you look at elements that are invariant under this action. What means just that here, if you take a lambda or a w dot lambda, it's the same thing, just usual action. So if you look at this uh, object there, what you can prove, what we prove, is that actually it's embedded in this thing here. So it's not that big. I mean, everything is in the positive part. Everything is in the tits cone, which was not obvious at all at first. So uh, if you take the wv invariant in this algebra, it's contained. So actually, we put something a bit stronger, but I just need this here. Uh, Because actually what we did is that we said that, OK, we know how to describe this uh, in terms of support, in terms of these coefficients, and in particular, this proof that this is true. But having this, we can define this completed 
like algebra. In contained or there is a monomorphism from one to the other? So there is, there is a, a monomorphism actually. I mean, it's really, uh, so you, actually we have a bijection which is compatible to the algebra structure and in particular this is this. But here um, I phrase it like this because what we are really interested in is this support condition. I mean, we really want to have control on when this coefficient does or doesn't vanish and that's why I just need this here. So completed. <coughs> so I could even say the completed Iwarihika algebra because so far we just have one Iwarihika algebra. Um, so uh, in spite with this almost finite subset things, we defined a notion of almost finiteness in Y times WV. Okay, so uh, a subset E of WV times Y plus is almost finite, finite. So here we have a very strong condition on the W part. So this condition is a finite test condition. So what do you want is that the set of Ws that may show up in, the in, the, in this subset. Uh, so so you want this one to be finite. And for such any such W, you want the corresponding set of elements in Y plus to be almost finite. And I can write it like this because sometimes it's just empty. So. Okay, so almost finite uh, as here, as up there. You can do the same for y plus. And now we can. So we define a set. And we prove that this set is not just a set, it's an algebra. And it's kind of the right algebra. So finally. So we let H naught be uh, the set. Okay, maybe I should write it like this of elements. Um, so it's formal series, really, really formal here. So here's just a notation for now. I will just say a word on this later. Uh, so with the set here being almost finite, as what has been defined. Okay, so here I pre read the symbol, but uh, in reality, what we do here is that uh, we see this in the, again, the bigger algebra, Bernstein Lustig, completed Bernstein Lustig algebra, uh, where we have a basis defined from such symbols, and we say, okay, let's look at just this formal thing. And what we prove, and it's, well, one of the hard part of the thing. Okay, maybe. Um, Yes, no, it's just all. This one is just all the one. First thing, this H hat is, is actually a convolution algebra. <coughs> in which this Iwarihika algebra defined by Bardi Pons, Gosson, and Rousseau naturally embeds. So it's a f for think it wasn't easy because you really have to. I mean, we have really an explicit formula for this convolution product, but you have to 
okay, check that it's well defined, and then check that everything's all fine. And well, it's a bit tricky. And then the uh, uh, maybe I can say something further here. So it naturally embeds as the subalgebra of elements with finite support. So this kind of shows up again that it's really a bit too small. And the main point in some sense, the center of this algebra is isomorphic to the spherical Hick algebra. So we really have this analog of what is happening in the reductive case. And well, just as a byproduct, the center of this Iwori Heck algebra that was built earlier is just the, it's really just a trace of the center of this completed algebra in the Iwori Heck algebra. Okay, so just two consequences, and then I, I think I will just stop here. Maybe a first remark. So, in the reductive case, again, these centers will be the same. But it doesn't mean at all that the algebras are the same. I mean, in the reductive case, we don't need that algebra here. And you can define it, but it's really, really, really big. I mean, you can have elements with infinite support, even in the reductive case. Uh, the second thing, and maybe I'll stop here then, is that uh, in the reductive case, I think you know that the iwori heck algebra is a finite type as a model of its center. Here, if you look at this uh, completed iwori heck algebra, then it's kind of obvious that it will not be of finite type over, over its center. So it's something really uh, much more ugly in some sense, but you really need all this element uh, in there if you want to really generalize what's happening on the <coughs> reductive case. Okay, uh, thank you for uh, your attention. <coughs>